Hello, welcome back to part two of the Mac Online tutorial videos doing, and uh, here's our little guinea pig to show off the Mac lab. This is one of the cheaper Macs, if not the cheapest Mac in the game, the Locust LCT-1E. I've uh, run, I ran this Mac a long time ago, uh, but I thought I'd buy this one fresh, just so everything was new, and you could see how the upgrades and such work. So, this is how every Mac will look default, or this sort of olive drab green. And when you click Mac Lab, this is what you're presented with. Uh, you'll be shown every other Mac you currently have in that category. In your case, uh, as a new player, you may have... You know, well, you probably have no Macs, but your first Mac you buy will be listed. And this will be the screen on. This button here, Mac Details, um, will bring up a quick overview of everything we've got. So we've got two mediums and two small lasers. And we have some heat sinks in the legs and a little standard 160 engine and generally weak armor. Uh, this little box will show off all of your basics, so your top speed currently, what structure you've ha you've got, what heat sinks you're using, your armor type, your maximum armor, how much damage you can do if, uh, in an alpha strike, firing all your weapons at once, uh, the heat management, generally the higher that bar is the better, uh, your max tonnage, so this mech is the lightest at 20. And if you have jump jets, that's how far you would be able to jump. Uh, locusts do not have jump jets, but uh, most lights do. This one is a bit of a, I don't know, I guess an oddity in that sense. So, let's jump right in. So if we click configure, we're taken to another largely empty screen at the moment. That's because of these buttons here. So loadout will bring up something that looks quite um, intimidating at first. There's all these engines and all, and oh my god, there's so many of them, right? So... Your engine is the most important part of any mech. Without it, it can't move. Without it, it can't generate power for its weapons. And if it's destroyed, you're out of the match. Now, there's a difference here in what type of engine you use. There are standard, or STD engines, meh, Jolt will stop laughing in the back, and XL engines, or extra lights. Now, the difference is, standard engines tend to weigh more, um, and generate about the same amount of power as an XL. But the difference is, if you equip a standard engine, when your left or right torso gets destroyed, um, you won't die instantly. However, an XL engine has the benefit uh, compared that it's very light, obviously by the name, but if you lose a left or right torso, it explodes. And uh, XL engines actually take up more space in the mech. So, for instance, we've got a standard 160, which is putting us about... Let's see, if we hover over any item in the in uh, the lab here, it'll give us the details. So, this is the engine that's currently equipped. It has, it takes up six slots in the center torso, and the slots are represented here, each one. So, as you can see, if I remove the engine, we free up a load of slots. Uh, this will always pop up if there's a if there's a problem. So, obviously, this one is there's no engine equipped. But you'll get ones that tell you you need more heat sinks, or this weapon needs ammo, or this weapon uh, might generate too much heat. Uh, so you have to be careful of overheating, that kind of thing. So, um, let's see, what could I do? Where could we go? Ah, there we go, an XL190. Just got one line around here. So, compared to the standard that I was running, so here's a standard 160. That weighed 7 ton and took up 6 slots, okay? And the XL190 weighs 6 ton, but takes up 12 slots. That's the big difference, but if I plot that in, and it'll warn you that you need more heat sinks, so that's fine. There we go, right. Now our top speed has increased, we now go 153.9 kph compared to the 126. And we've got a whole extra ton of free space to put in another heat sink or a weapon, but the problem we've got, if we have this really big engine, we need three more heat sinks, and heat sinks each weigh a ton. Um, but we should be okay, actually, because this one comes with four standard. So, the other things you can do, you'll have these other tabs. So, we've got equipment. Now, equipment on the center also will be things like Beagle Active Probe. A Beagle Active Probe uh, is a small item that, as it says here, uh, will increase your sensor range by 0.25. Uh, so, about, well, I think, roughly about 20% or 12%, something like that. Uh, it weighs one and a half tons. There are a few items that weigh half tons, so sometimes you have to be careful and how many slots it takes up. So I can't put a beagle in there because it weighs too much. I only have a ton left, but if I did, I could plot one of them in. And their effect in game is they can disable uh, enemy uh, sensor jammers, uh, called ECM. 
So they're very useful for uh, making sure uh, mechs of ECM can't sneak up on you. So it, they're a useful piece of equipment. Uh, heat sinks are necessary for, as they say, literally just dumping the heat generated by your mech. Uh, as you fire weapons, you will generate heat, and if you keep firing it, uh, you will eventually shut down. Uh, this is a function that the mech has to prevent the engine from basically exploding. Um, if you uh, keep firing and keep firing, you will eventually overheat the engine so much you will actually damage yourself internally, and you can accidentally kill yourself. Uh, you can look a bit silly if you do that. Ammo uh, basically lists every kind of ammo that you can have. Uh, in this case, it's showing me machine gun ammo. I'm not quite. Oh, sorry, anti missile system ammo. Uh, but if we go to one of the other sections and uh, look at the ammo, um, uh, I guess I guess I need a ballistic slot. Uh, but the weapons, since this mech can only equip energy, uh, shows us all the energy weapons we can have. So uh, at the moment, it's got a medium and a small laser. Now the size literally describes um, the size and damage. So a small laser is very light but has a very short range and does very little damage. But it fires quite quickly. A medium laser is a middle ground and large laser is the best range but the most heat and most damage. And obviously the weights go up uh, quite drastically in terms. Uh, small laser is half a ton so for instance I, I've got a ton free I could stick in another small laser so uh, we can find the smalls, which are here, and then we can equip. And you can actually see it visually change if I take that off, so if you look at this arm here, if I remove the laser again, and it's gone. So you get some visual feedback to see what it is you're putting on weapons-wise. Uh, if I take off the weapons, you'll see that now it's just completely gone. So you get an idea of what it is your mech is equipping and what isn't equipping. So if we uh, just quickly put them back on. Um, this little icon here will show you how many available slots you have for that weapon. So in this case, uh, the one E Locust can have three energy. Um, mechs that have ballistic slots, which I'll show in a bit, will have a different symbol. And mech with missile slots will have a little green missile. But I'll uh, I'll bring some of that up in a bit. So there's lots of different types of weapons, and by removing some weapons, so for instance, if we take all them off, and then. Say, say we want something big. Say we want a big weapon on this mech. Let's, let's be silly. Say we want an ER PPC. So I'm going to stick this on the right arm. Boom. Look at that. Freaking huge. But for that one weapon, I have <laughs> i can't really run it because it's 19 of my 20 tons already gone. And yeah, it looks it looks like it's going to do a lot of damage. And that, but I can't run it because I need heat sinks. So it's always... Trying to tactically play around with what equipment you can have and what you can't have. So it's like, for instance, I can't really have an extended large laser because they weigh five tons each. Um, so mediums are all pulses. Pulses are uh, a little heavier but do more damage with shorter range. Uh, I'll go into detail about the weapons on a, on a later video. So equipping items is very simple. As you can see, you can just click the equip button and you can drag them off as and when you need to. So we just get this back up to what level it was at before. Hey, back on that. And uh, pop them both in. There we go. Right, so now we're back up to that whole 19 ton. So, I need to free up some space. What, what if I want to make this make this make a bit better? Well, what you can do is you can go to, uh, well, not modules, but we'll get to that in a sec. We can go to upgrades. Now, upgrades come in a few flavors. You have your armor upgrades. Every mech... Generally, uh, but not all, we'll start with standard armor. But there's also ferro armor, which is a more advanced armor, but takes up more of those uh, slots in your mech. And the less slots you have, the less you can actually put in. But ferro armor will give you more protection, so if I want to equip it, you'll see the armor bar here should stay the same, but my weight has gone down. I've lost 0.4 of a ton. So 19 goes to 18.6. So that's freed up some uh, some weight for me because the armor's lighter and it's better, but I've lost a lot of weight uh, space in my mech. So it's all about trade-offs. Uh, endo steel structure. This is usually a good one to take. Again, like the uh, ferrofibrous armor, endo steel is a lighter but sturdier structure type. So this will change uh, structure that says standard here. If I click it, it'll change to endo steel. Now uh, that gives me a whole extra ton, but again, like the ferro, it's taken up some spots inside the mech. But we'll leave that as is for now. 
The final one uh, here that will be of any pertinence is probably the most expensive, one and a half million. This is to change your heat sinks into double heat sinks. Doubles are far more efficient at um, changing your heat. So heat management, one one. Double heat sinks, if I click that, switches the double. My weight has gone down significantly and my heat management has gone up. Because what double heat sinks does is it will change all of the heat sinks that are in the engine into doubles from singles. Now, this is quite expensive. You can see a total tally of how much it's going to cost here. So it cost me 1.7 million, which is more than the mech. So it gives you an idea. It's like upgrading mechs can be very expensive. Now, the guidance system is for missiles, uh, but an Artemis system will upgrade all the missiles and the launchers to have Artemis guidance uh, tracking, which will allow you to uh, basically have missiles that lock faster and travel quicker, uh, so you can guarantee more hits on target. So if we go back, we've still got this bugging us, so it's still telling me I need heat sinks. Okay. But we've freed up lots of room now. Now, changing from singles to doubles, it's removed the single heat sinks that were in the legs because doubles can't fit. And the only way they can fit is now you have these, and you'll see the difference. In a double, it takes up three slots each. They weigh the same, which is one ton each, but they take up way more space, so uh, space suddenly becomes something you have to consider. Some engines will come with space inside them. Uh, this is the largest engine that this mech can fit as an XL, and it has no internal uh, bonus heat sinks. As you can see there, it does say internal heat sinks at the bottom under rating, uh, zero uh, of a maximum of six. I believe it has six as standard though. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actually correct at the moment. So we need so our, our heatsink uh, situation, so let's see, uh, do we have space around? We do have space around. So uh, for instance, we could stick a uh, heatsink uh, in the arm and in left right torso. So, that, so that's that's freed us up pretty nicely. We've now got our heatsink sorted, our heat management is a lot higher, uh, we're moving a lot quicker, our structure is a lot better, and uh, we still have 3 ton. So what could we do in that 3 ton? Uh, well now that we've freed up the space, we could for instance, maybe I want to upgrade those weapons. Maybe. Maybe we want to. Maybe we want more medium lasers. So there we go. So why don't we have medium lasers? There we go. So we can have six medium lasers. Now you see heat management is very low, but my damage has gone way up. I'm now up to 30 damage in an alpha. But we could do that. Um, we could do other combinations. We could decide. Well, let's go with uh, something that does a little bit more. So let's go with uh, some medium pulses. So we could have two medium pulses. Our damage is a lot lower, but our heat's generally quite good. Um, oops, clicked the wrong one. Oh, clicked the wrong one again. No. There we go. But we could, uh, for instance, let's see, uh, you have flamers, which are good for overheating max. But our armor, our armor situation is a bit different, isn't it? So let's uh, let's go with. Let's go with two medium lasers and a small pulse. Nah, we'll go. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll go with four small. Uh, sorry, four uh, medium lasers. So we've upped our damage a bit. We've still got space left over. So one of the other things we can do is armor. Now armor is always listed depending on what section you're in. The mechs are broken up into uh, several sections that are quite important. Now. Uh, if we want to increase our armor, we can decrease our armor if we're insane, which means you have less hit points. So I could take all the armor out of the head when you do that. It'll tell you you have no armor in your head. So what you want to do is max that out. Now, your weight will go up because as you put armor on, obviously, your mech will get heavier. So that's maxed. That's maxed. That's maxed. Arms. Yeah, we can put a bit on the arms. So there we go. One, two, three, four. Legs is maxed. Right, so we we can max out its hit points, 138. We've still got space left over though, so one of the things So one of the things we could do now is we could uh, go back to uh, upgrades and we could still equip Ferrofibrous. Which frees up more space. Uh, well frees up more weight. Uh, we're on seventeen point nine now. So it's all about what kind of choices you want to make, but optimally you, you're going to want to be able to hit that max tonnage. 
so if we, for instance, say we take off the standard, so we go back to the 18.4, and we're not too bothered about the arms, so um, let's see if we can... 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, and let's see, we can like, just drop, there we go, so if we just take the armor off the, the arms and the head, we're back down to that 18 ton, so as I mentioned, we do have a bit of equipment, uh, we could equip a, a AMS system, pop that on, that's a half a ton, and as you can see now, I have this little section here to show off. And basically what that'll do is, uh, as incoming missiles uh, toward friendlies or yourself are fired, uh, this will automatically uh, knock some of them out of the sky. It's not 100% effective, but it will get at least 10, 15, maybe 20% of the missiles that attack you. And I'm not sure if it actually mentions the percentage somewhere. No, but it's roughly a third of the missiles fired at you uh, in any one salvo will get shot down. So now we need um, another piece of equipment, what have we got here? Well, one of the things we'll need, we'll need ammo. Uh, if we're going to run an AMS system, so then you click ammo and here's your ammo. You can put in half tons or you can put in full ton. And it tells you how many rounds you get, uh, which will be a thousand per ton. Um, that, that, won't last, that won't last a hell of a lot of time. <clears throat> so we could have like one and a half tons of ammo and that would be our 20%. One of the other things we could do, if we remove, uh, we could have a beagle probe, which will help in hunting down other light mechs uh, if they've got ECM. And then we've got another half ton, uh, which... Uh, oh, what can we do? We can mess around. Case will protect you from ammunition explosions, uh, which is going to be put in certain sections, left, right, or so, of the mech. Um, but we've got half a ton, so for instance, we could equip small laser. So then we've got uh, four mediums and a small. Uh, so that's one of the other alternatives that you can have. I mean the other alternative, um, it's just to give you the flexibility here, is we've got two more tons. Hell, let's just, we could just put in some more heating. So we could just uh, go like that and equipment and there you go. And then we've got a better heat efficiency and more like so yeah, let's go with that. So um, we go back. The other button was modules. Now, again, like the <laughs> like the first screen, this is a bit intimidating at the start. Now, what happens is is you every mech has so many slots for different types of modules. So we have consumables as the top one. Now, consumables, as I mentioned in the first video, are items such as airstrikes or UAVs. So let's see. I want an improved artillery strike. So we click equip, and it goes there. And this little checkbox here will allow you to automatically refill them. These cost about 40,000 each, uh, as listed here. Uh, we can do the same with UAVs, so there we go. And we can have them auto-refill after each match, so our mech is always equipped with those items. And you, just like uh, the mech bay, you can drag them off just as easily. Uh, airstrikes will uh, drop a selection of bombs uh, across a straight line area of targets, which you can do live in a match. Uh, airstrikes will bombard uh, a tight sector, uh, doing a fair amount of damage. Cool shot, uh, which comes in a few varieties, is a consumable that will allow you to quickly uh, reduce the amount of heat in your mech by dumping coolant through the system. And then you have these ones which are priority, priority uh, airstrikes and artillery strikes and cool shots. These cost real money, these cost mech credits. Uh, they're not necessary though for gameplay, so don't worry. Mech modules uh, come in a variety of flavours. You can have vision modules, such as the Advanced Zoom, uh, which will increase um, your zoom, as it says. Uh, basically, you have times four magnification rather than the times two, I believe. Uh, target modules uh, allows you things that allow you to uh, keep lock lock ons on targets even when they run behind you, uh, reducing the time that they uh, vanish, um, immediately making you invisible when you go behind a building. Good for avoiding missiles. Uh, support uh, could be things that make your artillery or airstrikes more accurate, uh, capturing bases quicker, um, being able to uh, reduce screen shake, running up hills faster, uh, not damaging your legs as much when you're running. Uh, speed retention uh, is for uh, keeping your mech speed at a decent level while you, one of your legs gets blown off. And sensors are things that will increase your range, uh, being able to detect enemies moving when you're standing still, so it's good for being able to keep an eye on sections. 
uh, of the map uh, that they might try and sneak around and target info gathering which increases the speed at which you uh, gather data. And the last one is weapon modules which is, again is quite a big list. Uh, this is uh, quite considerable but they come in a few uh, types. Range is self-explanatory, they come in five tiers that you can buy one after the other uh, with uh, pilot skills and um, these all cost about three million each, they're not cheap. Uh, again modules can cost more than this mech alone. I paid 1.4 million so it gives you an idea, three million C bill um, module is quite a lot of money. Uh, but they do things such as increase your range, so I've got um, Inner Sphere AC5 range 2 increases the range of Inner Sphere AC5s by 26 meters, a maximum range by 78. Uh, others uh, will reduce how quickly uh, they recycle so you can fire faster. Uh, a lot of these I haven't unlocked yet because uh, they're relatively new. And these miscellaneous ones are basically they make your AMS fire a lot quicker and your NAT beacons last a lot longer. I'll go over the weapons in another video so don't worry if any of these names are flying over your head at the moment. This is literally just for putting a mech together and what you can do with it. So we've we've built our mech, uh, we've looked at the modules, uh, we've done our upgrades. How about camo spec? So camo spec is where you get to paint. Now uh, unfortunately a lot of the paints are uh, lock, paywall locked. But if you want something that looks unique, um, these colours up to here are free. You can buy them with C-Bills in-game, but any other colour will cost you real money. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's. I, I don't really like the way they do the colour situation, but there are a lot of colours to choose from. So, for instance, let's have a Locust that's yellow with some blue and maybe a trim. Let's have, like, a greyish trim. There you go. And then maybe we want to have a pattern. There we go. And all these patterns are, again, paywall locked. They uh, come in multiple types, so like camo patterns, tiger stripes, mountain lines, we've got uh, just weird. Uh, some of these can, uh, they come in two different price ranges. Yeah, unlockable, which makes it unlocked across all chassis, uh, which costs 750 mech credits, quite a lot. Or one shot, or one time only deal. Got a pirate, uh, pirate scheme, uh, which comes with a like, little uh, graffiti and stuff on it. So there's there's quite a few different types of, um, of camos that they've brought out over the last few years. But you don't necessarily you don't have to have them. It's just for those uh, little sort of customized things. So uh, uh, there should be a way of uh, there we go. Just click reset, and there we go. There we go. So if you, you ever get lost in your colours, you can just do that. All right, if we go back. Uh, we have cockpit. So you get the basic idea. This is what your mech would look inside, and then you get items that you can put in. So I should I should have at least one standing item. Here we go. So there you go. There's a hologram of General Alexander Kerensky. There you can equip it. And again, all cockpit items cost mech credits. So again, it's going to be down to how much you really want to drop. But again, it's all for visual flair. For anyone who's spectating you, they can see the little items, so they can see the little alienware bobblehead bobbing around, all mounted items. So they can have uh, we can have some like speakers that play some music when you get a kill, or war horns they're called in game. We can, we can have some. Oh, no, I can't I can't preview the lights. They used to be able to preview them. So you can have those kind of items as well. Uh, weapon groups is um... all right. So. We have to save. Saving can take a little bit, but don't worry about the about the time. Uh, it seems to depend based on your connection. Uh, so if you're in the States, uh, your saving time is going to be relatively short. I'm over here in the UK, so it it's, can take a few seconds. Uh, the further, Basically, the further afield you are from Canada, uh, the longer it's going to take to save your loadouts. Uh, some people may have noticed this little flashing button down there. That's uh, when somebody uh, sends you a message or a group invite or something along those lines. Uh, so that's what you'll see, and that's how you'll know when somebody is uh, contacting you. So, uh, here we go. This is where I would set on my weapons. So, groups 1 to 6. Um, these can be the number keys on your keyboard, or they can be your mouse, depending on how many buttons you have. I have a three-button mouse, so I tend to try and keep it to um, left and right mouse, and E for group 3, and whatever else. But I've got four medium lasers, so we can have them set up with two of them firing in group one, two of them firing in group two. And that's it. It's that easy. You can also use the keyboard if you want. You can see it moving around left and right there. And you can use the right control button to turn them on, turn them off. So, 
Let's just save like that. So whenever I press left mouse, I'll fire two of the mediums. When I put right mouse, I'll fire the other two. Or you can press both, or you can just keep them all in one group. Uh, rename is where you can... Like, so I could name the Locust Critical Rocket if I wanted. Well, oh right, I can't apparently. They've reduced that. But, you know, you, you can name your mech however you want. It won't show up in game though, it's just for your own personal quick reference. And the last button is Strip Mech. This will allow you to pretty much take everything off it. Modules, equipment, armour, and uh, allow you to start from scratch. Uh, so if we go away from this one, uh, let's pick a different mech. Let's pick something that has ballistics. Like, uh, let's see, mech that's got ballistics. Do 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 do. Let's go with the... Let's go with the Centurion Yenlo Wang. So, this is a hero mech. Pretty much the same as loadout, but if you click mech details, ballistics are purple with little uh, ammo icons. Equipment uh, such as engines, beagle probes, uh, heat sinks are always blue. Ammunition is always yellow. Uh, energy is always uh, orange, orangey red. Missiles are always green, so if we find a mech that is equipped with missiles... Let's find a heavy with missiles. There's got to be one. Here we go. Thunderbolt. Yeah. Badass mech. So, Thunderbolt, and if we click Mac Details, uh, green, and as you can see the icon is always a little green missile. Different uh, variants of the same mech uh, can have different loadouts, so if I show you that quick. So if I go home and back to Mac Lab, this little button here is filter. If I click Purchasable, and then if I pick light again, so if we go back to our locusts, as you can see, there are several different types of locusts going from LCT dash and then their variant number. So the 1E, which we were looking at, has lasers. The 1M has missiles. So it has an LRM5, and you can visually see the difference. So there's its little LRM5s, and its laser there in the middle. And the 1V, which has ballistics, so you can see the little machine guns sticking out the left and right arms, and the little laser there again. And the 3M is uh, more lasers with an a AMS, uh, anti-missile system there. So, different chassis may suit different gameplay styles, different purposes. They all come with a default build, but as you saw in the video, um, I can pretty much strip down however I want. But you are hard-locked, so for instance, I can never put missiles onto the 1E. The 1E will only ever have energy. That's it for me. If I want a Locust that has ballistics, I'll have to buy a 1V, for instance, because that's got machine guns. But if I want one with missiles, I could buy the 1M. So that's how you will go about, and you need at least three mechs to be able to go through the skill system. So let's have a look at the skill system quickly. So here's our Thunderbolt, and if I go to the Thunderbolt skill tree. So it shows you all the Thunderbolts that are available in the game. Uh, so this one, which is mastered. I have to have three different Thunderbolts, so I'd have to have the TDR-5S, the TDR-SS, and the TDR-9S, or the 9SE, depending on which ones you want. And I would have to get basics on all three of them, as you can see. Basics. And that unlocks the Elites, and then I need to get all the Elites on one mech to unlock the Master Slot, which is again how I get the final one. So I said it can it can be a, feel like a grind sometimes. It can take a while, but you know if you really like it, you you're gonna you're gonna play it for a long time. Um. Uh. Yeah. Just to give you a quick overview then of weight classes. So the video here was showing off how we made our little locust. A locust is the lightest mech, 20 ton. The heaviest mech is an assault mech, going up to a maximum of 100 tons. Uh, light mechs are your scouts, basically. Um, designed going up from 20 ton up to 35 ton, it's their maximum weight. Uh, they usually fill a, new, a number of different roles uh, from a very quick scout max uh, to the likes of being uh, hit and run strikers uh, to little sneaky max that will use ECM to stay in cover. Uh, to some of them are even range support max. It, it depends on the build. Uh, medium mechs are your jack of all trades. Some of them are fast scouts like the Cicada. Others are a bit more top heavy and ready for a fight such as this Hunchback which will mount uh, one of the biggest guns in the game, the AC-20, right here in the shoulder. As you can see it takes up pretty much the whole shoulder. 
Others will be missile support platforms like the Trebuchet, with all of its uh, bristling missile ports. Some of them will be uh, jack of all trades. Uh, this one's mounting energy, missiles, and ballistics. Uh, they generally have decent speed and okay armor. Heavy mechs are, once again, they can be fast, starting in the 60 ton area, uh, going up to 75 ton. But they can be uh, sort of uh, faster scout variants. Uh, they can be uh, ranged support ones, such as this Mad Dog Prime, again with lots of missiles and energy weapons. They can be close range brawlers, like this Quick Draw. Uh, they can be ballistics fire support, uh, fire support platforms, sorry. And they can be just gods of the battlefield, like this Orion. This is one of the heaviest of the type, 75 ton. And then you have the assaults. The assaults can be siege mechs, such as this Awesome. Going up to, again, brawler types like this Victor. Um, command, jack of all trade type assaults, such as this Battlemaster. Snipers, like the Highlander with its Gauss rifle. And then the king of the battlefield, the Atlas, 100 ton. A uh, true, truly feared item on the field. And after you finished your achievements uh, for cadets, all 25 matches, you could buy one of these uh, if you wanted. And just to give you an idea, when you think of what the Locust had, this is what the this is what the Atlas can have. Um, bristling with guns. I mean, it's four lasers, an LRM. Uh, an SRM, an AC-20, yeah, lots of stuff, lots of heat sinks, lots of armor. Very slow, that's the downside. Assaults are the slowest mechs, lights are the fastest, medium and heavies can sort of be interchangeable depending, but mediums are, a rule of thumb, uh, mediums are faster than heavies but not as well armored, whereas heavies are more well armored, but still generally good speed. Uh, so, I hope that helped. Um, the final video of the series will be looking at uh, movement and firing weapons and exactly what the weapons do. So, uh, any questions, leave them in the comment below. Any suggestions, uh, let me know, and uh, thanks for watching. Crystal Rocket, signing out.